morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day to come to church and proclaim that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen and amen. It is very good to see you today. I hope you got your praising shoes on because the Lord is worthy to be praised at all times for all things. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Roger and Terry aren't going to be with us today. They're traveling down with uh, to see a friend who lost a loved one. So I would I would appreciate if you would uh, pray for the Welsh family and pray for Roger and Terry as well uh, as they're traveling. And Lauren Leonard are, are helping a family member as well. So uh, pray for them. So good deal. Huh? This is an amazing race. You got it. I hope you remember last the sermon last week, right? So hopefully you brought something with you today. Did you bring something with you today? I sure did. Brought some praise. How's it when you come together that one has a song or one has a word or one has ha, has a hymn? One has a spiritual song, right? We're all supposed to bring the Holy Ghost with us. Yes. We're supposed to bring what the Holy Spirit has been sharing with us throughout the week when we come to church. So it's it's not just me talk, doing all the yapping, but you hear what the, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. You know, the cool thing about it is the Holy Spirit is usually saying the same thing to all of us, right? Hallelujah. Well, stand your feet. Let's get ready to praise the Lord. Almighty God, as we come into your presence right now, thank you, Father, for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that as we come into this place, Lord, we've come in one accord. And, and our hearts are set on you today. Father, I thank you that we've come here because you are worthy to be praised. When we come, Lord, I thank you that when we, we are in this place together, your Holy Spirit is here with us. And so, Lord, we just want to open our hearts before you right now. And we're going to open our mouths. We want to pour out thanksgiving to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Father, we, as we move through this service, give us ears to hear your voice. Holy Spirit, move in, in our hearts. Speak to us. And guide us and lead us. And Father, give us obedient hearts to follow after you. And Lord, we just pray for those who, who are traveling or couldn't be with us. Father, some that are out ministering to family members or friends. And Father, we just pray that you protect them. Holy Spirit, that you use them to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to bring comfort to their family members. And, and watch over them as they travel. And so Lord, we just bless you today. We're, we are expectant of what you will accomplish in this house and in our hearts. And in our city, and Lord, we glorify you ahead of time because we know that you are always, always faithful. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now before we get started, if I could, uh, I'd like to make a special thanks to a lady in the church named uh, Angie Smith. Um, it's amazing how God works. I don't want to put her on the spot, but I'll be Too late. Her on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just want to let her know how much uh, we appreciate her and thank her. Uh, for, uh, it's amazing how God works. I was doing the thermostat uh, two weeks ago, walked by her, and for no reason, I've never even thought about this before, I, as I, I did the thermostat and walked back by her and I said, well, why aren't you on stage with your husband? I had no reason to say that. Uh, and I heard her voice, she sounds very, very good. But as, as uh, again, how God works timing-wise, that must have planted a seed because I text Steve off and on through the week, kind of being sarcastic about, uh, like, you know, let's, let's get her on stage and be great and whatnot. Well, my <coughs> being gone and her filling in, this is how God works. And uh, Angie is one of those per, uh, people I can point out, 85% uh, of everybody out there, would you come up here on this stage? The answer is no. And, <laughs> and, there, and Angie, I feel the reason she's up here, she knows it's not about her. It's about God, and I thank her for being up here. Amen. And this well, song rocks, so let's get ready. <laughs> well, how's it make you feel to know that he's coming back for you? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I think I, that makes me pretty excited. Yeah. <clears throat> Praise you, Jesus. And his blood saves, still saves. Still yeah. heals, Hallelujah. still forgives, yeah. still casts as far as the east is from the west. Do we carry this treasure about in earthen vessels and know that he's coming back? That's awesome. Yeah. You should be more excited about that. You just are really not thinking about it. Woo! Praise you, Jesus! Yeah. Come on, yeah. Lord! Yeah. You're worthy of our praise today. We thank you, Father, that you love us. Yes. 
us. And that you're faithful to us. And your word tells us that you went to prepare a place and you are coming back yes. for us. Almighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. That we have a hope and a future and an inheritance with you, our King and our Lord and our Savior. We give you praise today. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Lord. I'll tell you, I was thinking about the first song we sang and talked. You can be seated if you like. Thinking of song, talking about an orphan. And you know, we're all spiritual orphans. Well, every one of us. Yeah. The only person that wasn't a spiritual orphan was, was Adam. He had Father God. And then he rebelled and then he became an orphan. But God didn't leave him that way. Amen. He left him, he left him with the Father. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take all of us spiritual orphans. Well, that song said, that makes, makes sons and daughters out of orphans. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You didn't, just get, you didn't just get adopted into a decent family, an okay family. You got adopted into the family of Almighty God. Amen. Which makes you, makes you... Kings and priests of the Most High God, right? Not too bad. Is the Holy Spirit speaking to anyone? You got if a word of Scripture? Miss Terry. Um, I had a word. I wasn't sure until you sang a song about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is near. Amen. Right? So I was thinking about that this week, actually, the kingdom of God. I know the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's what the word says. And I don't have Scripture things for this. Yeah. I wasn't sure. But the kingdom of God, that's kind of abstract, abstract for me. The kingdom of God is Jesus. And Jesus, in him we live, we move, we have our being in the kingdom of God. Amen. Because we're seated at the right hand, as Ephesians 2 said, of Jesus Christ, of, the, of God in heaven. And so the kingdom is in us. And Jesus even said the kingdom is near when he was talking. Even in your mouth. Even in your mouth. The kingdom. So the kingdom is Jesus. He's not abstract to me. Righteousness, peace, and joy sometimes is. Hallelujah. Jesus is not. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know when we sang that song, what the, the, the scripture that came to my mind when we were singing that is uh, John the Baptist. You remember John the Baptist preached the kingdom of God is near. And, and he talked about Messiah when he came. And, and, you know, he saw, he saw his cousin, and, and he looked at him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb that, that takes away the sin of the world, recognizing him as the Messiah. But later, when he was in prison, he was having doubts. And he, and he, sent, his, he sent his some of his students to go talk to Jesus and, say, and ask him, Are you the one? And Jesus answered, he didn't say, Yes, I'm the one. He said, You go back and you tell, you tell John. That the blind see, and the lame walk, and the deaf hear. Say, the kingdom of God is here. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? I have a testimony. It's about my friend. Okay. And, well, I told the story Wednesday. Because my friend was getting ready to commit suicide. And... She called me and told me that all this, and I'm like, okay. So then I, I get get my Bible out, and I start reading scriptures to her. And so she get, I prayed for her. She gave her life to Christ. Amen. Her and so then that's when she told me she's going to Bible school, Bible college, to become a pastor. What? And so... She told she called me up yesterday and said that she graduated this May on the twenty fifth. Very good. And Pretty quick. I'm like I was jumping for joy. Amen. I I was literally in tears all day yesterday. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for being obedient and speaking to your friend. Charlie? Amen. Yeah. It is good to see Karen with us, back with us. Glad she's better. Praise the Lord. Our ushers are going to come. We're going to receive our tithes and offering this morning, and then our children and our kids can be dismissed. Oh.
you got your pink envelopes in here. All in your bulletin. This is first mission. This is mission Sunday. First Sunday. That's okay. I know. I saw disappointment on a couple of faces. So we receive missions offering every week. Just to, uh, on the first Sunday of the month, we emphasize our missions. You know, we don't always go, but we can we can bless those that do go. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we do pray for our missions uh, people today. Um, for Tom, Denver, and, and the Hills, and the managers, and our kids that are in New York City. Father, we just pray that you bless them where they are. Pray that as we give, you know, as we give our missions offering to them, Lord, that uh, we're putting, we're planting seed in fertile soil so that the gospel can go forth, and so that we can see souls saved. That's what it's all about. It's all about seeing people who are apart from you, who were orphans, coming in and finding out that they can be sons and daughters of Almighty God because of your great love. So, Father, pray for we pray for our church. I pray, Lord, that you use us, that you that you um, fill these seats. There's lots of empty seats, Lord. Yeah, we look okay. at them and we yes. say there ought to be a person sitting in those seats. And so, Lord, we pray for every empty seat right here. That you have a name and you have a person who's supposed to be here. They might be family members. They might just be friends. They might be people we don't even know yet. But Lord, we know that you, uh, you, you said, go out into the highways and byways, compel them to come in so that my house might be filled. And so Lord, we pray for those empty seats today. And Father, we pray that you loose our lips and our hearts, that we might speak the truth, that we might invite people and, and tell them about the love that we have in Christ Jesus. Father, I pray a blessing on every home today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Just give you a couple of announcements while they're receiving tithes and offerings this morning. Uh, coming up on the 20th, we have a banquet. It'll be 6 o'clock here at the church for mothers and fathers. Well, everyone's invited. Everyone's got a mother or father. You might not all be mothers and fathers, but that's okay. You can come anyway. Amen. The 20th, that's 6 o'clock. May the 20th. Uh, also... Uh, if you have youth that are interested in youth camp, there are uh, applications on the bulletin board in the foyer as you're going down the ramp. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else. Pastor, oh. birthdays. Birthdays? Christy had a birthday in May. Is she going to slap you? She asked me to say the age, but I'm not going to do it. Uh -oh. <laughs> no. Uh, Meg, you might want to uh, announce... Uh, you might throw that pink coat over your head. <laughs> Meg's baby Wyatt. Wyatt. Oh yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Priscilla went home to be with the Lord. We had her service this week, and and then on on Wednesday, right? Wednesday, Mr. Wyatt Richard uh, Keller showed up. He was seven pounds and eleven ounces. Hallelujah. I'll take that. It's my birthday, seven eleven. Could have been seven eleven, but he was seven eleven. So. Anyway, he's a handsome dude. I uh, got, got to see a picture. Looking forward to getting to hold him and, and uh, see what that's like so I can practice. <laughs> In faith, believe me. That's right. Hallelujah. We all good? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I, I, I thought I was going to talk to us. I was looking forward to that. <clears throat> I don't know. You guys better hurry because all the kids left without you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can trust them? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good thing. Have your Bibles today. Turn to uh, John, or Luke chapter 18. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit um, for several, several weeks now. I'm going to change gears a little bit. Not that the Holy Spirit's not involved in everything that we do as, as Christians, right? Um, we're going we're gonna to start talking, probably spend a couple of weeks at least on prayer. Because God doesn't do anything outside of prayer. God, uh, God expects his children to pray. I, there's a scripture where Jesus was teaching. And he said, he said three wins. When you pray. When you fast. When you give. You know, then not, not if. Or if you, know, you, if you think you should. Or and no when. When you pray, when you fast, when you give. And he gave us some instruction on all those things. And so prayer, prayer, is, prayer should be our, uh, you know, 
That should be a lifestyle for all of us who are Christians. And so oftentimes it's not. Um, we pray. Uh, we're 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 we pray when we really have something going wrong, wrong in our life, right? We pray when there's a, a disaster, or we pray when somebody asks us to, maybe. But prayer shouldn't be something that that we just do when there's an event. Prayer should be something we do all the time. Amen. I'll try to prove that to you with a couple of verses. Let's pray first, Father. As we open your Word today, thank you, Lord, that your Word is alive. Your Word said your, it says that that it is. Uh, a sharp sword able to divide between the soul and the spirit. And so I pray, I pray, Lord, that as we study your word, Lord, your Holy Spirit is who we need. We need him to help teach us, open our hearts, that we might not only receive it in our heads, but, Lord, that it would go into our hearts and transform us into the image of Christ. Father, we thank you that your word is good, your word is true, your word is faithful. Your word is a gift to your children, and we love you and praise you for it today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 18, verse 1, says this. Then Jesus told the disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray. Your King James Version says it this way. Men ought always to pray. Always to pray. That's... That's something, isn't it? Yeah. And then turn to turn to Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, let's see, what is it? Chapter 5, verse 16. Be joyful always. Ha. Oh, you got that one? Be joyful always. Yeah. Pray continually. And King James it says, pray without ceasing. So Jesus said we ought always to pray, and he says, pray without ceasing. And then let's read verse 18 too. It's good. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I want you to think about this one. Um, you ever ride in a car with somebody? Let's really, I mean, you ever, I'm sure you have. You ever, just two people, you and somebody else riding in the car. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's not somebody that's real familiar with you. But you just ride along, and, you know, if you're not talking, it's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of, you know, you're trying to think of something to say, and whatever, just so that you don't have that awkward silence. Well, think about it. In your life, are you ever alone? No. You are never alone. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. So it doesn't matter where you are, he's with you. If he's with you all the time, shouldn't you speak to him every once in a while? That's good. And acknowledge that he's there. <laughs> Especially if it's someone uh, like Jesus who has done so much for you. Amen. Someone, someone like the creator of the universe who... who like Terry said, in him you live and move and have your being. Someone who is the creator of all things and has made all things and by whom, you know, nothing that was made, or, yeah, nothing, nothing that has been made has been made without him, something along those lines. And he's with you, and he's in you, and no matter where you are, he's there. I told this before one of my... I, I, get, I usually walk through Walmart praying in the Spirit. Not that I'm afraid or anything. <laughs> There's opportunity for that. <clears throat> Mostly so that I, when I get up there, there'll be a checkout line open. <laughs> I've never seen you answer that prayer line. <clears throat> that's, not, that's not true. I love going to Walmart. I meet great people there. I mean, talk to, talk to all kinds of folks at Walmart. I look for opportunities when I go to Walmart. You never know. You never know when you get to talk to somebody or just smile at them and say, hey, how you doing today? There's so many people that are grumpy in Walmart. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't go to Walmart in your pajamas, okay? You're not an orphan. You're a child of the king. Put your clothes on when you go to Walmart. 
That's funny. It's true too. Uh, you know, the, the, here's, here's what, I was just doing a little study in, about what the word to pray means. When, when Jesus said, men ought always to pray. And that's one, of, that's one of those Greek words that's really hard to pronounce. Prosukomai or something like that. And I'm not a Greek, so don't make fun of me. I'm not a Greek guy. So, uh, But it, it, here's what it means. It means to exchange wishes. And if you think about it, <coughs> voice is cracking. Maybe I'll be the beard. Um, that when, to exchange wishes. I go to, when I pray, when you pray, most of the time what we do is we tell God what's on our heart and what we would like Him to do for us, right? Lord, bless my kids. Lord, you know, I got a brother-in-law that's not saved. Pray for him, Lord, and you'll, you know, you'll lead him to Christ. Lord, I have this financial problem. Terry and Roger are traveling. Pray blessings on them. This family lost uh, lost a loved one. Comfort them. Well, that's that's not an exchange. Okay? That is me telling God, that's me dumping my part on God. Alright? Well, an exchange of wishes is not only do not only do I speak to God and tell him what's on my heart, but I listen to God and find out what's on his heart. Amen. And, and I'll tell you, uh, I, you've heard this from me many, many times. It is far, far more important for me to hear what God has to say to me than it does for God to hear what I have to say to Him. Amen. Doesn't, it say, doesn't the Bible say that, you know, when we ask these things, your, your Father who's in heaven already knows wow. that you have need of them? And so... It's far more important for me to hear the voice of God speak to me. To tell me what's on his heart. Than it is for me to tell him what's on my heart. So, you know, one of the things that, one of the things that we, we, as Christians, we don't talk about much. But the Bible tells us we're supposed to meditate. Right? We're supposed to meditate on the word. I'm not talking about getting weird. We're supposed to listen. We're supposed to. To dwell and think about the things of God. Think about, uh, we'll get to Philippians where he talks about whatever things are pure, whatever things are holy, whatever things are just, whatever things are right. Think on these things, right? That scripture. Those are the things that we're supposed to meditate on. We're supposed to meditate on and, and listen to what God has to say to us. That's really important. Really, 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 really important. Doesn't the Bible say something like, be still and know I am God. Be still. You know, we barely, God, I barely have time to tell you what's on my heart. I don't have time to listen to you. I got stuff to do. That's a bad attitude, I'll tell you right now. Amen? And you know, here, there's the cool thing. God can speak to you as you go. If you incline your heart towards and your ear towards Him. If you say, when you're walking through Walmart, Lord, I love you. I praise you. Glad you're with me today. Speak to me. I'm here. That's why, you know, sometimes I pray in the Spirit when I'm walking through Walmart. Not out loud. Not like an idiot. I'm, you know, <laughs> don't. Well. <laughs> don't. Yeah. They throw you out for that kind of thing at Walmart. <laughs> kind of like some of the other churches around. They throw you out for praying in spirit. But anyway. But here, let me, let's go back to that Greek word. That Greek word not only does it mean to exchange ideas. But get this. Here's what it says. It says to interact with the Lord. And switch ideas. And switch my human wishes. For the wishes of God. <clears throat> as he imparts faith. Wow. Think about that. 
that my, my, my idea is, my, <clears throat> my job in prayer, what it means to pray, is not just for me to pour out my heart towards God and listen to what God says to me and then kind of balance out the two and see where we can meet in the middle. That's not what it means. It means that I pray and I hear what God has to say and I stay in prayer until he imparts to me and his wishes become my wishes. His will becomes my will. And, it, and you know, it's Easter. We've talked about it two, three, four times. Uh, but Jesus in the garden as he prayed, you know, he prayed three times. That's what it says. He prayed three times. He went and he said, Father, if it be your will, let this, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. Three times. He went back. He's like, come on, guys. You've got to help me pray. Pray. Why? You're sleeping. Can't you stay up with me just an hour? And he went back three times and prayed, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. He stayed in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane that night until his human wishes that he be released from that call and that, and that, um, that word and that directive of command of God until it became his. That's probably as good of an example of prayer as we can, as we can see and we can find. You know, we pray, we pray, if we pray, if our will and our wishes are something that's outside of God's will, then we need to stay and pray and listen to God until His wishes and His will becomes our will. Amen. Amen? See, our number one job as a Christian is to please the Father. Please the Father. I, um, this is a, this is a rerun story, but I haven't told you for, for a long time too. But one of the best stories about prayer I ever heard was about a, a man, a young minister, who went to minister to an elderly gentleman who was bedridden. And after, after a few weeks, um, he led the man to Christ, and he was saved. And the old the old fellow told told the minister, he said, you know, I've 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 been an old man set in my ways. He said, I've never I've always trusted in myself. I've never I've never leaned on God or talked to God. Would you teach me to pray? And the minister was sitting in a chair beside his bed and he said, Well, Mr. So so prayer's real easy. He said, he said, you just he said, you just talk to God. He said, just imagine that God's sitting in this chair like I am. And you just speak to him and tell him what's on your heart. <coughs> and listen to him and, and, and just imagine that he's sitting right there in that chair. And, and uh, you know, the guy lived for a, a while longer. And then the minister got word that the older gentleman had passed away. And he went to see the family. And, and the family told him, said it was the strangest thing. He said, you know, uh, when we found that and he was dead, that he had he had pulled himself out of bed, and he had his head and his arms wrapped around that chair. Aww. That's prayer. That's prayer. You know, to 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 have that relationship with God. You know, there um, there's all kinds of I was. You know, I, I Google search stuff and look uh, what I'm looking for. Not what I'm looking for sermons, but mostly when I'm looking for scriptures and whatnot. But anyway, you can find a whole plethora of, you know, eight steps to answer prayer and, well, you know, nine, seven, three, six. You don't know which one's right. Um, and those things are good. Now, I'm, not, no, I'm not knocking those things. All those things are good. Because there are some principles of prayer we're going to talk about. But the main principle of prayer is relationship. Amen. That you have a relationship with the one you're speaking to. And that, doesn't that always make it better? That you know the person that you're speaking to. And you know the person that you're asking something of. I like to talk to the person I know that has the authority to grant whatever I'm asking as well, right? What a great opportunity. 
you get to talk to the guy who owns the earth and everything therein. All right, well, I'm getting I'm getting bogged down. Turn to Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter four it says this: <clears throat> Rejoice in the Lord always. Do you know what rejoice means? It means to delight in God's grace. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. You should be happy about being a Christian. Yes? No? Maybe? Yes. Yeah. Let, all, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. That word anxious is an interesting word. You know what it means? It means to be pulled apart, to be divided, to be pulled in many different directions. Isn't that the way you feel when, when, you're, when you're all stressed out and you're nerve worried and you don't know what's going to happen and what's it, you know... What decision is going to be made here? How do I answer this question? Or where am I, how am I going to pay that bill? You just get ripped up and pulled in so many directions that you begin to fret. You know? Most men are pretty good. We, we, we can, as long as there's only one or two problems, we can handle them. But if we, there's multi, there's a, if there's a multitude, we, it gets tough. Right? At least I'm that way. But I, I read that and I was like, man, that's, that's exactly right. You just feel like you're getting pulled in so many directions and you're getting pulled and, and, and you don't have an answer. You don't know how you're going to be in every, you know, all of the places you need to be. And you just begin to get anxious. That's exactly right. Mike said you don't get anything done. But God says, don't be that way. Be anxious for nothing. But in all things... By prayer, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Amen. <coughs> and the next verse says this. Well, we're, let's read verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, one of the things, <coughs> one of the things about this life and this world that we need the most is peace. Amen. You know, it's it's not just it's well, number one, the Bible says in this world you have many trials. There's always going to be something come up. That's why men not always to pray. Right? There's always going to be stuff. Until the devil until we're taken away from the presence of the devil and sin and, and our flesh, there's always going to be an issue. And so the issue is not the issue. The issue is that we need peace in the midst of the issues. Boy, that will preach right there. And so he says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer. You know, I, I, uh, Ruth Stitt was our praise and worship leader for a while. And she would always say, if you're going to pray, why worry? And if you're going to worry, why pray? You know, you pick, you pick it. Pick your answer. You know, do you want to put it in God's hands and allow Him to answer your problem, or do you just want to keep worrying about it until it works out? Or it doesn't work out. Right? And so, the, I like what that says. It says, it, it says, and the peace of God, that unsurpassing peace of God, doesn't say all your issues are going to be taken care of. It doesn't, he doesn't say... He doesn't say, well, you just pray and they're all going to go away and everything's going, we're all going to be living in a rose garden like Lynn Anderson, you know, sang a lot years ago. Some of you not old enough to remember that song. It's all going to be all drinking free bubble up and drinking, eating moon bean pies or something like that. That's for any one of those country guys. It doesn't work that way. Yeah? What, we, what we're looking for as Christians is we give our, we, we give our burdens and our issues to God he gives us peace. And he gives us our answer. In his due time. Right? Verse 8. Yeah, verse 8 says this. 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What's that got to do with prayer? Everything. Everything. If I pray to God and I say, God, here's what's on my heart, here's what's, here's what's after me today, and then after I pray, the things that I think about are, are the worst. You know? If I think about all the problems that I have and I begin to magnify the problems, I begin to think about, you know, you know the worst case in every scenario, you start thinking like a doctor. They tell you the worst so they can't get sued. Um, just a job, doctor joke. If anybody's a doctor here, I apologize. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. That's a doctor, yeah. No. No. What, we be, what he's saying is, what our job is, after we pray, after we thank God for, in our prayer, and our supplication, and our thanksgiving, we've prayed to God, we've given him thanks for the answer, then we begin to meditate on the things that are good and pure and lovely and righteous and right. That means we begin to focus on the answer. Or we begin to focus on God. We begin to focus. We don't allow our mind to take us down the path of destruction, death, and, and the worst case scenario. If you do, you're going right back into worry. You're, you're saying, you're saying, excuse me, let me borrow this. Say, God, here's my problems. Thank you. Now get back to me. That's, that's what we're doing. And that's what he's saying, don't do. What do, I, what do I think on? What do I meditate on? I meditate on the goodness of God. I meditate on the word of God that's true. I meditate on the answer that God gives me. I meditate, meditate on him because here's the thing. We can't always meditate on the answer because God doesn't always answer the things the way we want him answered. You know what I mean? He, he oftentimes has answers that we know not of. He has, he has a way out that we never saw. And so we meditate on God and His Word and, and, and allow His will to become our will. And allow the peace that passes all understanding Amen. rest in our hearts. Amen. Because know this, all your problems will never go away. I, I, I've come to grips with this for a, a little while. Not, not that long ago. Because I was, I was a pretty bad worrier. You may not know that, but I was. And I started, I changed my frame of mind to worry, from worrying about stuff to thinking about, well, it's going to be really cool to see how God gets me out of this one. <laughs> you know? Because... He always does. He always does. He has for 55 years now. I've been in a lot of sticky wickets. Not real bad. Well, some pretty bad. And he's got me out of every one of them. Not always the way that I wanted. And it wasn't always the cleanest. And it wasn't always the most comfortable. But he got me out. And I'm here. And he's taken care of me for a long time. Some of you he's been taking care of for a little bit longer. I was going to say a lot, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> And so, you know, I, I just came to the place where I'm like, you know what? It doesn't do me any good to worry. It doesn't do me any good to stay up at night. <clears throat> when I, you know, when I lay down at night and you, and, you, and you begin to think about all the junk that's going on and all the issues of life that you have, and, you, and there were times that I'd be up, I started, I started, I just pray, Lord, nothing I can do about it. You can. You promised me that I could sleep. You promised your sons and daughters sweet sleep, so I'm going to sleep. Most of the time it works. But I still have a flesh. I still struggle with myself every once in a while. But I consciously made that, that thought. I thought, you know what? God's got me. And, and life's a challenge. Problems, problems, are not, problems are not things that are, you know, are going to destroy me. There's not a problem on this world, on this earth, that will destroy me. Remember Paul's to see the little guy? 
the little guy from Pakistan that the devil told him that if he preached the gospel that he would kill him. And Paul's response to the devil was, devil, don't threaten me with eternity. You know? Don't threaten me with eternal life. You know what Jesus said? Don't fear those that can kill your body. Fear the one who can send your soul to hell. Amen. All right? And that's your heavenly father who loves you. And if you're living according to him and his son or daughter, he's not sending you to hell. He loves you with an everlasting love, right? You belong to him and no one will ever snatch you out of his hand. Right? So, we this this the problems of this life are challenges to be overcome. And this life's a vapor. Whether you live 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, whether you're Methuselah and you live in, what, 984, something like that. It's a vapor compared to eternity. Right? And so, the cares of this world, even though they press in on us sometimes, there are challenges to be overcome. They are opportunities for God to work in your life and show Himself strong. You know, I, I've, I've asked you before, I'll see if anybody remembers. What is the root of every miracle God has ever done? There's something. Well, Rick got it in the back. Must have been the pink suit. <laughs> A problem. The source of every miracle that's ever that God has ever done on the earth was a problem. From the beginning, hey, you're out of wine. Well, it's, you know what you need to do about it. It's not my time. <clears throat> anyway, we're good. Let me read you something. You guys remember a guy named General Robert E. Lee? Yep. He had a few problems. Here's what Robert E. Lee, one of, one of his, uh, his writings. I think if I can find it. He was the general of all the Confederate forces in, in the, the Civil War. And um, we did not fight the French in the Civil War. As I've seen some people say on those, you know, when they go on the street and they ask people, who fought the Civil who did we fight in the Civil War? The French. <laughs> yeah. You need to go have a talk with your history teacher. Right. <clears throat> General Robert E. Lee, commander of the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia, wrote, knowing that intercessory prayer is our mightiest weapon. And supreme call for Christians today, I pleadingly urge our people everywhere to pray. Let there be prayer at sunup, at noonday, at sundown, at midnight, all through the day. Let us all pray for our children, our youth, our aged, our pastors, our homes. Let us pray for our churches. Let us pray for ourselves that we may not lose the word concern for those who have never known Jesus Christ and redeeming love. For moral forces everywhere, for our national leaders, let prayer be our passion. Let prayer be our practice. Amen. You know, you, you have, have you noticed that not all of them, but a lot of them, when you begin to look at great men in American history and other history, you find out they were great men and they were great men of God. Amen. Pretty cool stuff. But I liked how he ended it. Let prayer be our passion. And let prayer be our practice. Amen. You know, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you that, that you have to go lock yourself in a closet somewhere for four or five hours a day. If you can, that's great. Because the word prayer actually means a place of prayer as well. It, it indicates a, a place to go pray. All of you, you all, we all should have a, go, a place that we go pray, that we go meet God. You know, that wherever that place may be, it's different. It should be different for all of us. But not only should prayer be the, our, our passion, but it should be a practice. We don't have to be locked in 
But we should know when we're going through our day, we should constantly be aware of God. We should constantly be speaking to God. And we should be listening to God. Should be here. What are you saying? You might be surprised about what God tells you about some person at Walmart. You know? Or as you're going through your day. Pray for her. Speak a word of encouragement to her. Might give you a scripture to speak into that person's life. You know, God says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, in prayer, in thanksgiving, let your wishes be known to God. I mean, it might just be something like that. Something very, very simple. But if we, if we, as we go, if we'll listen to God, he'll speak to us. Right? Amen. My sheep hear my voice. Okay, turn to, turn to Mark chapter 10. This is the state motto of, of Ohio. Why pray? Why pray? This is this is right after. Um, this is where Jesus is talking about. It's in, it's impossible or nearly impossible for, uh, air, or it's harder for a camel to go through an eye, or harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of the needle. Mm -hmm. This is what he says. Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. That's why we pray. That's why we pray. See, you, you think that you're boxed in, and there's no answer, and there's no hope. But the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. Amen. That's why we should pray. That's why we always pray. That's why we magnify God and meditate on his word and on him and allow him to work in our lives. Okay, now turn to, that was just a free one. Turn to Mark chapter 11. Just threw that one in for giggles. It's, it's also a really good one. Mark chapter 11. We're going to start reading in verse 12. It says, Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Then verse 15 says, So they came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And if you read that, you might be saying, wow. Talk about waking up on the grumpy side of bed. <laughs> Cursing fig trees and turning over tables and, and driving out people with a whip. And, wow. You know, Jesus did everything with purpose. Let's read them. It says, he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. Then he, get this. It says, he taught them. <coughs> then he taught them, saying to, saying to them, it is, it is not, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've made it a den of thieves. And so, you know, I, I, that, that's one of those ones that just jumped out at me this week. The fact that, you know, I've always thought Jesus, he was, you know, he was righteously angry. And he drove them out of the temple. But, you know, he, he turned over their tables, turned over their doves, you know, all their animals and everything. Wouldn't let them, allow them to carry anything through the temple. But then it says that he taught them. He didn't just, he didn't just go in there and upset the apple cart and, and drive them out of the temple. He then told them why. This is good discipline for you. Little ones. <laughs> you guys have got little ones or grand, you know. You discipline them, but then you teach them too. Don't just hit them and say, don't do that. You discipline them and you say, 
here's what we expect of you. Here's what you're, how you're supposed to do this. this. You bring correction and love. And, but it says he taught them. And he says, look, my house is supposed to be a house of prayer. And you've made it into a den of thieves. Let's read on. It says, now in the morning, oh, it says, and the scribes and the, and the chief priests heard it, and they saw how they might destroy him. For they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. And when evening had come, he went out of the city. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw a fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Jesus was always teaching. Was he disappointed that there wasn't a fig on that tree? Probably was. But you know what? The word, the, actually, I think in one of the other places it says, it has, the, it has the, the caveat, for it was not the time for figs. But Jesus just wasn't by himself. He was with the disciples. And he, he walked over that fig tree that didn't have any figs on it. He cursed that fig tree. He went into the temple. He, he, now understand, he was there the day before. He saw what was going on. He rode in on the, on the fall of the donkey. He saw what was happening in the temple. He went, he went back to Lazarus' house the next morning. He rides in, sees the fig tree, curses the fig tree, rides in, drives out the money changers, turns over the table, says, look, this is supposed to be a house of prayer. This is supposed to be a place where God and men come to meet and exchange ideas and exchange wishes. And we interact with God and we meet God and we talk to God. And, we, and that's what this place is for. It's not for selling and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Right? And then on the way out of town, they see this fig tree, or I think it's the, the next morning, Peter sees the fig tree and it's withered. He's like, hey, you see the fig tree? It's dead. Jesus said he, he cursed it yesterday. And he's probably pointing out all the, all the other disciples and Jesus says this. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Jesus was teaching all the time. He, he, did he, was he upset at the fig tree? I don't think he was upset at the fig tree. I think he cursed that fig tree to demonstrate to the disciples that the power of life and death is in the tongue. To demonstrate the power of prayer and to demonstrate why his house is supposed to be a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. To demonstrate to them that with God all things are possible. That when we, when we discourse with God, when we, when we go to God in prayer, when we spend time with him, that the, and, and, we, and we speak to him and we pray in faith, the things that come out of our mouth matter. Amen. Have faith in God. You know, <clears throat> faith and prayer, faith and prayer are so, yeah, intertwined. That's a good word. Because here's the thing. If I don't have faith, I'm not going to pray. And, and even if I don't have faith, if I do pray, my prayers are going to go as far as my voice can be heard. Right? Faith, it, it, takes, it requires faith to please God. But we, when we as God's people speak to God, and we pray to God, and we believe, and we have faith in God. When we go to Him in prayer, and we believe that when, when I go to God in prayer, that He hears me, and that He answers me, and that I have what I ask for, and I believe that God is the one who can answer this prayer, 
I believe that God is the, you know, I believe that he can do all things. I believe Mark chapter 10 verse 27, with God all things are possible. Even though I don't see an answer, I believe it's possible with God. And, and I begin to pray in faith, things happen. That's what Jesus was trying to demonstrate and show to his disciples. That, and, and you know, he didn't pray to that fig tree. But he spoke in authority. He didn't pray. He didn't pray at the temple the day before. But he spoke in authority. Right? They were afraid of him. The, the priests, if you go back and look at a little history of what was going on, the priests were making money. The people that were selling doves and all, you know, the, the, the word says you have to bring a dove for this offering or you have to bring a sheep for this offering. Well, the priests were saying, well, you can't just bring any old sheep. You can't just bring any old doves. You have to buy these here at the temple. You have to get, you have to use, you know, these approved animals. And I'm sure they were charging them way, you know, they were wrong. They were robbing the people. That's why Jesus was upset. He wasn't upset that the people were bringing sacrifices. He was upset because the people, who, the men in charge who loved the people and were in authority over them were robbing them and abusing them. Yeah, dead of thieves. He said, that's exactly right. And so he, he wasn't praying when he drove them out of the temple, but he was speaking in authority. Amen. And as God's people, he... He doesn't say that that's something that's available for, was just for him or just for the apostles. He says this. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Amen. It's, a good th it's a good thing to go to God and say, you know, Father, I have these issues, and, and, uh, and I know this is going in, into my this is going on in my life. But also, part of prayer is saying, "Cancer, go. Amen. Debt, go. Speaking in uh, Abraham said it about calling things and be not as though they be, and it, it's in other verses in Romans as well. You know." We, you have an unsaved loved one, begin to speak about them as they're saved. <laughs> Call those th that's what faith is, calling things that be not as though they be. There's a mountain in front of you, so go. Mountain, go. And believe in your heart that you have, and, and here's, let's, I wasn't going to do this today, but I'm going to. <clears throat> Verse 27, skip down a little bit. He says, And when they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him, and they said, By what authority are you doing these things? And Jesus said, I'll tell you what. They want to know, they want to know by what authority Jesus is not only just turning over the tables, but how he heal the sick. How's he heal the blind? How he cast out devils? By what authority? Are you doing this? And he said, he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I'll tell you if you tell me if John was from heaven or if he was, uh, if he was from hell. And they're, they're like, oh, we can't do that. If we say, if we say anything bad about John the Baptist, everybody loves John the Baptist, all the people are going to riot. <laughs> but if we say he's from heaven then that's going to, John said that this guy is the, the Messiah, and so if we say John's from heaven, then we're going to have to agree that this guy's the Messiah. So they come and go, well, we're not answering him. Jesus said, I'm not going to either. But here's the point. But here's the point. The authority that God, that Jesus had came from heaven. The, the authority that Jesus had came from heaven. And Jesus spoke to his people and he says this, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go. Whoa. Amen. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. But in the name of Jesus is not hocus pocus. It's not in the name of Jesus is not uh, a magic word that you say. 
in the name of Jesus recognizes the relationship that you have as a son or daughter of God with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who has all authority in heaven and earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Remind, I'm, I'm getting sorry, I'll just quit here a little bit. I've got another side I've got another side story. Remember remember the seven sons of Stephen? That guy. <laughs> uh, uh, he began to he he was a guy that was practicing driving out devils. Right? He didn't know Jesus though. And he was he, he thought it was cool to drive out devils, and so he he he'd say, In the name of Jesus who Paul preaches Devil go. Well, he ran across the. Uh, I, it was a guy that was pretty well possessed. I don't know exactly the story. You can read it. It's in Acts. And he began to try to cast out this devil. And the devil came out and said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. You, I don't know. Yeah. And the man beat him up. Oh. I mean, the, the demon possessed man beat this guy up. And sent him on his way. See. The authority that Jesus has given us. Is to go in his name. And do and yes. preach the gospel. Right. And to heal. And continue, continue his work. Heal the sick. Yes. Cast out devils. Do those kinds of things. And, G, and, and, and you know. One other, one other side story. I'm, I'm all off the rails right now. Anyway, so it'll be alright. I'll get, I'll get back next week. Remember, there's a story. There's a story where the disciples couldn't cast out a devil. Okay, yes. couldn't cast out a devil. And Jesus came down, and and um, he's the father of the boy that couldn't cast out the devil. Comes to Jesus. He said, "I brought you my, I brought my son to your disciples, but they can't couldn't cast out the devil." Jesus says something about a oh, faithless generation. You know, how long am I going to put up, do I have to put up with you? And then he says to his disciples, this kind only comes out with prayer and fasting. This kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. And, and remember, when you pray, when you fast, when you give. Those are things that Christians are supposed to do, right? But, see, the, the, the authority comes from relationship in Christ. And the authority comes from praying in praying the word of God and knowing the will of God. When we've prayed, and our will becomes God's will. When we've prayed and we know what God's word is, we know this is his will, and we speak in authority. And, and we speak not only from authority, but from a relational stand, standpoint that we know God. And he says, and back to Matthew, or uh, Mark chapter 11, if I believe in my heart, I don't doubt, I can speak to that mountain, say go, and it will be cast into the sea. <clears throat> Just a few points on that, because I've already brought that scripture up. Just real fast. Number one, I gotta give you some uh, teacher. I'll give you some numbers here, right? <laughs> have faith in God. Amen. Number one, have faith in God. Um, if you have faith in God, you're gonna pray. Number two, don't doubt in your heart. You know how you don't doubt in your heart. Uh, sometimes we have doubt in our mind. It's in, it, doubt in your mind is not doubt in your heart. Okay? Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So, don't doubt in your heart. Always believe deep down that God can do this. With, the, with God, all things are possible. It's human, and it's human to look at a situation and go, oh God, man, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't have to know. God knows. Amen. Amen. I don't have to be able to. God can. Amen. Amen. We lean on Him. Don't doubt in your heart. And it says, ask when you pray. Don't think that you're bothering God by laying your petitions before Him. Don't think that you're bothering God to go to Him in prayer. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says, come boldly before the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to help in time of need. Some of us say stupid stuff like, well... You know, I'm just not worthy. I don't know. I'm not good enough. God doesn't want to do that. Blah, 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 blah. You're right. You're absolutely right. But when we go to God, we don't get what we deserve. We get mercy. Amen. We get what we don't deserve. 
It says we go to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Ah, I love that. Number four, believe that you receive. Believe that you receive. That goes back to think on these things. Thank God for what you've got. Or thank God for what you don't have yet. Thank God for what you've asked Him for, but you don't have it yet. But believe that you have it. I have it. That's what I'm saying. That son or daughter that's away from God, speak to them. Speak about them as though they're born again. Speak about them as they are sons of God. Call those things that be not as though they be. Believe that you have them. My son or my daughter is going to walk. They are a man of God, walking with God, obedient to God, hearing his voice, impacting the world for the kingdom of God. Don't say, oh, well, my son, or he, he's a low down line, slimy dog. He, if he doesn't get saved, he's going to burn in hell. That's not faith. Getting off the rails again. <laughs> believe that you receive them. Believe that you have them. And I left out a passage of scripture in between in Matthew that says, When you pray, if you have something against your brother, forgive. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you have something, if I can't go to God and I'm, you know, man, I see that guy again, I'm going to slap him right in the head. <laughs> he makes me so mad. <laughs> God got something to say to me. Uh, no, God says, I don't want to hear it. <clears throat> yeah. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. You know, you come to the throne of grace to receive mercy and you have no mercy in your heart? Yeah. I don't think so. God says forgive. When you, if you, when you come to pray, you got something that's dividing your heart, pulling your heart apart because you're, you're fighting with somebody, some loved one, some... Uh, forgive them. Then come to God. I'll quit right there. <laughs> Man ought always to pray. Oh, one last thing. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is really good. It's worth it, though. It is... And I, I promise I am not going to say anything about politics or anything. I promise, I promise, I swear. Uh, yeah. no, I, the Bible says don't swear. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Trump held the uh, international... <laughs> 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 say it! As believers, it is our responsibility to pray for America. Always, not just in times of crisis, without diminishing the importance of the Supreme Court or the Congress or the President, they are not the source of our future or our hope. Amen. Only God and the power of the Holy Spirit working in the lives of citizens can sustain the strength and future of this nation. James 5.16 encourages us that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And throughout the Bible, we see how true these words are. Prayers move the hand of God, and changes came to nations, leaders, laws, and individuals. S.D. Gordon said, the greatest thing anyone can do for God and man is pray. It is not the only thing, but it is the chief thing. Amen. First, as God's people, we must humble ourselves and confess to God the sins of our nation as well as our own lives. Our self-centeredness, lust, addictions, the love of the world... In any area which we are disobeying his word, God has said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. John Wesley adds, storm, John Wesley, founder of the Methodist church, right? Which our roots are there. Storm the throne of grace and persevere there and mercy will come down. Second, we must pray for our leaders and authorities. Ask the Lord to give godly wisdom, protection, and direction to the president, Congress, state, and the local officials, judges, as well as those, those whom God has raised up to lead his people. If we see non-believers taking control of the government, passing laws and vi that violate the laws of God, and jeopardizing our God, giving freedoms, our mandate is to intercede 
and to trust God to restore godliness to our nation and community. Amen. Third, Amen. we must pray that the Lord will work in a powerful way in the hearts of believers and people from all walks of life. Only God has the power to free people from sins that destroy their lives as well as the foundations of righteousness. And fourth, we must pray for families, school systems, the military, the economy, and the vital aspects of, of our society. Be aware of what is going on and pray. That's good. Yeah. I thought that was really good. I thought it was something good to leave you with. And um, I'll tell you what, I'll probably make some copies of that next week and give them to you because it's, it's pretty important. That's good. Amen. Stay on your feet. We've talked about prayer today and just want to take a moment. Anybody, anybody have a, press, a really pressing issue in life you want prayer for today? Mike, Sherry, Danielle, anybody? Something specific you want prayer for. Okay. Oh, Lisa. Lisa, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sherry has a family member named Lisa. Uh, they found her in the bathtub, um, unconscious, um, not breathing. Um, anyway, it was not not drug related. Nothing. The toxicology is all clean. They don't, they don't know what happened to her. So anyway, her name's Lisa. We'll pray for her. Danielle. Me and my dad. Okay. Mike. Um, Patrick's in danger of losing his home. His sister's petitioned the court because of neglect. Yeah. Uh, Patrick needs at least one day of a small army to show up with uh, rakes, mowers, and uh, weed eaters. Just to donate one day or half a day would even be appreciated. Uh, I have a, uh, a horticulturalist who will come in and, and trim the trees and the bushes and everything properly. But uh, he needs somebody to show up with uh, rakes. Yeah. <coughs> if you're if you're somebody who's willing to help Pat out, we'll we'll set up a day here so you can go help him out. So, um, okay, very good. Well, let's pray. We're gonna, here's another prayer principle. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. We can put a whole bunch to flight together. Amen. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, thank you. For the opportunity. Thank you Lord. For that we have the authority. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Our Savior. Our King. To come boldly before the throne of grace. To receive mercy and grace. To help in time of need. Yes. And so Father. We, we cry out on behalf of Lisa. And her family. Lord we speak to her brain. We yes. speak to her body. And say begin to function properly. Whatever the enemy has meant for evil. Father. We just rebuke it. In the name of Jesus. And Father thank you. That you are God. You are a God of, who is a healer, who is a restorer. And Father, I thank you that Lisa is breathing, walking, talking, alive in Christ. And Father, I thank you that, that as she's in that hospital room, your Holy Spirit is renewing her right now in Jesus' name. We just declare it to be so. By his stripes, we are healed and we speak to Lisa's body. And Father, thank you that it is lining up with the word that says she's healed. Father, I thank you for Danielle today. Lord, I just believe that she has favor with God and man. And so, Lord, uh, you, are her, you are her source. You are her ultimate source. Not a company, not a person, not a man, not anything on this earth. But, Lord, you are her source and you will provide for her. And, Father, whatever means you are going to you provide for her, whatever job it has, Lord, we, we ask for your will be done in her life. Your job, the window for her... Uh, the, the job that you have for her, yes. Lord, would begin to open right now. And Father, we just declare it to be so. Father, I thank you that, that Danielle is uh, blood bought, born again, and you are her provider. You are Jehovah Jireh in her plate, in her, in her stead. And Father, thank you for Pat. And we just declare the word: no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Yes. And so, Lord, um, thank you, Father, that you yes. will. Uh, you will unite your people around Pat to help him in his hour of need. But also, Lord, that you intercede for him in the courts. Amen. You intercede yes. with him with his yes. sister. Lord, we pray, Father, that there be restoration of family and sister-brother relationship. 
Father, that whatever hurt, whatever pain, whatever difficulties have been there, Father, have to go in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want that more than anything because houses, land, all that stuff's going to be burned up. But sister and brother are eternal. Father, that, our, uh, that, that relationship will go on and on and on. And so, Lord, we just bless them right now in Jesus' name and call that restored. And, Father, I pray that you give Pat wisdom. Father, you, that you, you give him your wisdom and your word. Your word says if we ask for it, you'll give it. And, Lord, we know that that's what's going to be done. And so, Lord, we declare your will to be done in Patrick's life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. I bless these people to go from this place, to spend time with you, to pray, to let, to Father, I pray that you just speak to them, each one of them this week, sometime when they're out and about, Lord, that you'll speak to them and use them in the kingdom. Lord, you'll use them to speak a word into a, into a life or, to, or, or to, to help out in a place where they didn't even know that they could serve. Lord, use us as your people. To minister to the people who need to know about Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, just ask for that for every one of us this week. Lord, give us, make us aware that you're with us this week. So that we don't neglect you. Forgive us when we do. But Lord, I pray that wherever, whenever we're out and about, Father, that your spirit's just speaking into our hearts. Speaking into our minds. And Lord, that we'll, we will be used in the kingdom for your will and your glory. Father, pray blessings on marriages, homes children. Yes. Father, pray that we're a blessing at our job or wherever we go tomorrow. And Father, thank you that, that you are coming again to receive your children unto you. And we are looking forward to that day. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I love you. Have a great day. Pray. Yeah.